All right, we're back at the Vic. We did the door jams uh, over the weekend. Today is, I don't know what today is, Wednesday, Thursday, whatever. It's terrible outside, so we're working here instead of stump grinding. Now, my son came over yesterday, helped me pull the hood and the deck lid. It's all flipped over. Listen, this is an engine compartment, the hood, right? So you're going to have all the fumes and grease and stuff build up over time, and it's going to get in the nooks and crannies, and it's normally in this general area right over the top of the engine. So the first thing you want to do, and you want to do this on door jams too, you want to use a general purpose degreaser. This is I like this brand, awesome. And it says there, all-purpose degreaser. You can use simple green, purple power. I mean, if you can still get, I don't know where you live or whatever, even Top Job was great. The one they used, or Mr. Clean or whatever, all those older ones. I buy this at the Dollar Tree. It's like a dollar twenty-five for a whole gallon. Uh, actually, it looks like a gallon. It's a half a gallon. And they deceive you in packaging, but it's great stuff. It's a concentrate. It's uh, there's another one, awesome. The regular awesome, fantastic. I've been using that stuff for years. So you degrease it, clean it really well. And you always start with a good clean rag and another wipe-off rag. And then you get rid of them. They're over there. Next thing you're going to clean with, after you clean it all once, you're going to clean it with a grease and wax remover. And I put this in a small spray bottle. I don't flood it. Or you can put it on the rag itself and clean off. But then, what I do then is I use the... I'll show you here in a second. You got to wear gloves, and the reason why you got to wear gloves is you have oil off your hands, all right? So you don't want to do all this work and then leave oil tracks off your hands. So you wear the gloves, and you'll go through a couple of pairs, trust me, and you use the red or maroon Scotch-Brite pad. These are rated at 320 grit, and those, you really want to use those because you can get in all these nicks and crannies all the way around here. After you do that, I clean twice. This is isopropyl alcohol. I take this, and I bought one of these cheap pump-up little sprayers, okay? I mix this stuff 50%. Half this to half this with water, okay? You can use distilled water. If you got distilled water, the better it is, but regular water is fine also. And... Just this is like a dollar something at the stores, maybe under two dollars. And then with water in here, this does two things, all right? The isopropyl alcohol will clean. Second thing it does, it's anti static, all right? Even if you don't try an old painter trick. And there's a guy named uh, Candyman on YouTube, fantastic guy. He knows the trick, too. I was surprised to see it. Even a just a damp, clean microfiber going around with just water on it will de-static things. That's, so it's, it, when I say de-static, it's not a magnet to dust coming down on your hood or whatever you're painting. I don't care. You don't have to paint. You could be doing an art project and you know automotive stuff. You could be doing metal work and you want to spray it with the clear. It'll stop it from being magnetized to where it attracts all, out of the air. All right? So anti-static. So we learned something today. So this is the process we've done now. Everything's been cleaned. I'm going to put on a pair of gloves. This has already been scotch brighted and sanded in all the little nicks and crannies. The next step is, what we'll do is I'll put on these gloves here. And it's already been outlined taped. Everything's been nicely taped around here. So I'm painting just the inside edges of the hood. And later on, when I, I flip this over, I'll back tape all this so we have a nice edge. So what we're going to do is we're going to spray sealer on here. And then I'll show you after it's sprayed with sealer. And then after that is the base coat, and then after that is the clear. But one more thing before we paint this, I'm going to have to use a tack cloth. And I'll tell you all about them when we go down to the base coat. You use it first before... Let me shut off this fan. What we shot is the 2K sealer. 
Basically, it's actually, I use U-Pulse 4 to 1 primer, and there's a, if you go in a technical data sheet, it will tell you what you can re reduce it down to a sealer. And why I use it is because it's the same what I used primer on the, tr on the car, so that I'm using a, the same product over as a sealer. So I like to use the same brands for same steps of stuff as far as priming and, and going with sealers. Now, I'm going to use it... We're going to be using our top coat on here, and I use a tack rag. I use a new tack rag every time I do whatever today's project is. These, the hood and the trunk lid. I use a different track rag for the jams. Now, this dries very rapidly after it flashes. You'll know it when it flashes, when it goes from shiny to flat like you see here. I use a tack rag again around it. I use it first before the sealer and then after the sealer. And you do pick up little niblets and stuff here. Because, you know, no matter what I do, this is a homemade paint booth. I know it's pretty nice, but still, it's not a professional paint booth. So I still get leakage from the outside and dust. So I tack it again, and then now we're going to spray the base. And then we'll watch when we're spraying the base afterwards to see if anything's in there. If something falls in there, after my second coat of base, I can lightly sand it out with a piece of 800 or 1,000 grit. And when you sand it out, you're going to go the same direction, just lightly swiping to knock if there's a nib or something that fell in there down. Then I'll put my third coat of base on it. We'll see where we're at, okay? Oh... Uh, Shout out to Clark's Paint in uh, Tulsa and Oklahoma City. They sell this product called Tolerance. It's a base coat. They're pre-mixed colors already. This quart is 30 bucks on that color. And what it took on here was to do the deck lid in it. These are large services. You know, it's a big car. It took a, oh, I mixed up here, about a half a quart to do. So I've used one quart. I will have used one quart for the jams of this entire car. All right? And that's mixing it at the one to one ratio and it covers real well because I'm using basically almost the same color sealer. So I'm not having to try to go over, you know, some dark, like if this was black underneath here and go over it with the gray, it might be harder. If it was a red, something like that, to try to go over it, this colors, it covers very well. Base coat's been shot. I put three coats of base on here and then what I'll have to do is I'll have to tack it before I put the clear on it. I'm not using a high dollar clear for door jams or on the hood because it's not going to be hit by sunlight and so you don't need a high high UV, UV resistant clear. Alright so I'm using a U-Pole and I like the stuff. It's very thin to shoot, warning, but I've used it for a long time now and I like it. You can get it at an auto parts store. I think the whole package deal is like under 90 bucks or something like that. And that's with the activator. It's the same activator that's used in their primer that's reduced down also to a sealer. So it's great for doing these kind of projects, all right? So this is all the inside stuff. I will be using a different kind of clear for the outside. I'm still rolling the dice on it, but I'm pretty sure I made up my mind on it. It's probably going to be a, a brand called Wanda, which is a very good brand. If guys don't know it, just research it. I think it's made in South America. It's, and it's also repackaged under a ton of, all, all, almost all these clears. A repackaged, repackaged, and repackaged with a different label on it. Sometimes it's the same stuff going around with five different names, okay? So I mean, like, even like, not, well, I don't want to get in trouble. I'm not going to mention any names, so if somebody tries to sue me or whatever, I'm just saying to you that I was told a long time ago, hold on. Uh, shut off that fan for a minute. That there's really only a, a few big production uh, facilities that make the clears, all right? Then they ship them out and, and people give them their formulas. So there's a bunch of high, you know, it's just like anything, you know, you could repackage anything, something that costs $100, repackage it and say it's liquid gold. 
and then you charge $300 a gallon. That's just me. I didn't mention any names. So I'll see you after we clear this. Well, they're sprayed. They came out good. We used the U-Pole. Let's see what number is that stupid stuff. U-Pole, uh, 2882 clear. It's thin, so you got to watch yourself. Came out just fine. And let me, t let me advise to you, if you've never painted before, when you're painting under a hood, it's actually a little harder than a car because so many nooks and crannies you got to make sure and get the paint in. But I do have a little tip for you. Always look at the way that people are going to be looking at. When the hood is up, you're going to be looking down this way. All right? So that's just a... And the trunk lid, too. Look at it as you want your best finish to be when the hood is up and you're looking straight down it. Because from the factory, there was hardly any paint on the back edges of the trunk lid and all. I mean, barely any paint. You could actually see through it. All right? So, all right, so we're done with that. The door jams are done. And that's it for this week, guys. Have a good one, man.